This is the PixInsight process tutorial for Gaia. You find this process as always in all processes down by G and you find it practically in each and every menu here. You find it in Astrometry, you find it in Global, you find it in Star Catalogs and I'm sure if you look closer you find it somewhere else. So it must be an amazing process for how many places you find it. Let's see if it is. So first of all, what is Gaia? Gaia is a star database that is actually released by the European Space Agency, ESA. So in the last about five years, they collected data of 1.8 billion stars. And this includes the position in the sky, the parallax, the proper motion, but also astrophysical parameters, spectral types, spectroscopic parameters, and so on. Now, why are we interested in Pix Insight for that? Easy answer, plate solving. This is the database that we use when we do plate solving, for example, for the photometric color calibration. And if you have already watched my tutorial for the APAS process, this is exactly the same, but now not for the color part, but for the plate solving part. So while the APAS database is used for the color definition, the Gaia database is used for the positions of the stars. If we download both databases, then we're completely off the internet. Then we can really run the photometric color calibration without having to access the internet and it's much faster. That also means vice versa if you have not watched the APAS tutorial please watch it afterwards because it really makes sense that you put these two puzzle pieces together. So what we're doing here is very similar as we have done with the APAS process. We first have to go into PixInsight, we go to downloads, software distribution and once we're in there you find here Gaia. Now what comes natural is that you think you would now download the file from Gaia DR3 because that's the most up-to-date database and it's in the PixInsight to download so this must be the right one. So the issue is we are at a little bit a strange point here as it looks like because this DR3 database of Gaia was actually released in June of 2022 and we're now in October 2022 when I record this video. So PixInsight has managed to enter it here but unfortunately they have not managed to change the process that actually Gaia would accept that. So at the moment it's useless because at the moment PixInsight, the Gaia process, still expects EDR3 and that was the early release of this DR3. And Big Insight, they seem to have removed this EDR3 from here, so you cannot download it anymore, but the DR3 is still not accepted. So the only thing we can do is actually work with the DR2, and that works fine. So please check once you actually, if we go back now here in Pix Insight, once you find here instead of the EDR3, the DR3, then you will be fine to actually download this newer DR3 database at the moment you have to leave it here on DR2 and here on the home page we actually have to download DR2. Now you do not have to download here each and every file because as you can see the first one is already covering the magnitude range down to 16.4 which is more than enough for plate solving. So don't make the mistake to download the whole 40 gigabytes. You, you can if you if you feel like it, but it's absolutely not necessary. Just click on here, download this file, and that's sufficient. So once you have downloaded it and put it in the right directory, we go now back here to Gaia, select your Gaia DR2, click on the wrench, click select, ensure here again, Gaia DR2, and select here the DR2 database. Click open and okay. And to test it, just press here the global button. And if everything stays white, and not red, everything's fine. Obviously, we have no output file selected, that's fine, but we have tested, the database is installed correctly. With that, you can close that down. If we go now in photometric color calibration, just under plate solving parameters, 
ensure that automatic catalog is deselected. Here we go to Gaia DR2 XPSD. So if we have now done that and also have done the same thing with the APAS, as I show you in my other tutorial of the APAS um, process, then we do not need the internet anymore to do the photometric color calibration. And even if, if we have the internet, it should be faster now. So we can test this now with this picture of M2. I already entered here all the data. Click now, let's see what happens. And you see it goes really fast. It doesn't have to download anything anymore. And so it just runs through. Obviously it still has to do the calculations, but no more downloading. This was completely skipped. And that's the real cool part. So there's one last thing. You might wonder now, will it stay? So if you close this now down the process, you open it next time, will it stay like that? And unfortunately the answer is probably not. So the best thing you can do, which also helps because usually the focal lengths, the pixel size is anyway, always the same. So you take this triangle and instead of moving it on a picture, you just move it on the side and look at it, process 47. So you can actually click here on the top right. You give it the name, my photometric color calibration and you save that as a project. And from now on, every time you need it, you can open it here and everything is already the way you want it. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button so that you also get notified about all the other 1 million processes that I will have to cover here. See you next time and clear skies.